Welcome to Microsoft Flight, a digital-only free-to-play flight sim published on the Games for Windows Live service in 2012. Before we dive into the game itself, here's a little context around the creation of this short-lived oddity. A few years after the release of Flight Simulator X in 2006, so around the time that players could normally expect the announcement of a new Flight Simulator title, Microsoft disbanded their in-house Aces game studio, and the Flight Simulator platform itself was licensed out to Lockheed Martin for the creation of Prepared. Although Prepared served the hardcore audience well, as time went on, the gap in the market for casual flight simulation became steadily larger. This was, in part, due to Flight Simulator X slowly becoming incompatible with modern operating systems, so casual players, who did not want to subscribe to Lockheed's product, were gradually losing access to flight simulation. Enter Microsoft Flight, announced in 2010, this was to be Microsoft's glorious return to the mainstream flight sim market. However, as was fashionable around that time, Flight was designed as a free-to-play product. The base game contained just one scenery area and one airplane, with additional locations and aircraft made available as paid DLC. This was received by the audience about as well as one would expect, and development of Microsoft Flight was abandoned in August 2012, just three months after its release. Thankfully, to provide a stopgap simulation solution for modern PCs, Dovetail Games took over the Flight Sim franchise in 2014, and continued to support Flight Simulator X until MSFS arrived in 2020. But now let's look in detail at the Microsoft Flight base game. Despite Games for Windows Live closing its doors a while ago, the game itself is still available to this day, and instructions are in the description below. The base game contains some Hawaiian islands as a location, and the Icon A5 as the flyable airplane. There are three missions included. The first starts in flight, and teaches the basics of manoeuvring the aircraft, pilot wing style, by weaving between balloons. It concludes with a short field landing, which the player is expected to manage by themselves. Mission 2 features our first takeoff and a water landing. The final included mission is a landing challenge, which aims to explain the relationship between pitch, throttle, airspeed and angle of attack. But it feels clumsy and confusing and alternates between AI and player control, so it's difficult to make a stable approach. This mission also introduces the Pappy Light system, which, to be honest, just adds to the already heavy workload this mission forces on new players. With the missions complete, the player is now able to progress to seven included challenges, around the same Hawaiian islands in the Icon A5 of course. Let's quickly take a look at some no commentary highlights from those challenges. The extra speed will come in handy when you need to climb. Other modes include the obligatory free flight, although there is no in-sim flight planning capability, so it's strictly VFR bush flying. The other game mode is an aerocache hunt, which involved locating hidden waypoint objects and was an attempt to jump on the popularity of geocaching at the time. Microsoft Flight's short service life meant that DLC was limited to a handful of historic and general aviation airplanes, priced between $7 and $15, and two scenery expansions, some more Hawaiian Islands and Alaska, priced at $20. So that concludes our look at Microsoft Flight. Please let me know in the comments if you ever played it, what your thoughts were at the time, and if you still have fond memories of it about 10 years later. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please drop a like, feel free to subscribe, take care, and I'll see you next time.